Barnaby Jones, a Quinn Martin production. Starring Buddy Epson. Also starring Lee Merriweather, Mark Shera. With guest stars Mark Jenkins, Laurie Prang, Michael Vasileone, Richard O'Brien. Tonight's episode, The Inside Man. As soon as this is tallied, you fellas have another pickup to make at the sports arena. I keep my mind on business, Ralph. If those figures don't jive, Mr. Dyer's gonna keep us all here till midnight. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I guess I'd like a cup of coffee. Tell her I'll be there by seven. <laughs> hi. Hi, Miss Longacre. How are you? Oh, hi. How's it going, Robert? It's Ralph. Boy, hey, Ralph, you're taking a break, huh? <laughs> Get a little punchy in there sometimes. Industrial fatigue. I read about it in a magazine. You gotta be careful of that. Oh, industrial fatigue, yeah. Maybe you're right. Yeah, the way I see it, counting money all day long is like uh, tightening the same bolt on an assembly line. The monotony could crack a guy up, you know what I mean? Sounds like maybe you ought to talk to the boss for us about uh, getting more vacation time.
crazy price in there. No, but be sure to give me time to get this card back. Free. Now, everybody on their feet and put your hands on top of your heads. Come on. You. Come here. Open the door. No. Nope. Put your other hand. That's right. Sweetheart. You fill up this bag with the bags. I got to get a cup for Kathy. <laughs> Plans, kid. You're gonna get your cut right now. Ralph, what happened? One of my men's doing it. There were two of them, Mr. Longacre. Looks like Ralph stopped this one. The money. It's all here. You took a terrible chance, Ralph, going after an armed man. You mean you did this? He sure did. Ralph's a real hero. As chief of security for Longacre, it's my job that's on the line. Company's off the hook. The robbery failed. The money's recovered. The only one that's going to wind up holding the bag is me. Well, Joe, in the 30 years that we've known each other, I've never heard of anyone questioning your integrity. I don't think it's a matter of integrity that Longacre's questioning. It's more like my competence. What about the police? Do they think it was an inside job also? Well, they haven't labeled it as such. But since my security people are the only ones that are supposed to have the key cards that would open that fire door, I can't blame them for thinking so. You stand behind your people? The FBI couldn't have done a better job of screening them than I did. They're clean. I'd stake my career on any one of them. I guess I have. I take it you've accounted for all the key cards that were issued? Well, they're signed out when a man comes on duty. They're signed in when they go off. Nevertheless, it would be a simple matter for somebody to slip one out during the day and get a duplicate made. Well, that's a possibility, Barnaby. But I'm hoping that you can dig up some information pointing away from any of my men. What about Mr. Longacre? Is he going to mind having a private detective snooping around? Well, frankly, yes. But he doesn't want his board of directors wagging a finger at him in case it turns out that everybody but me has been on the wrong track. How about it, Barnaby? Would you look into it? I think you already know the answer to that, Joe. I'll give you a call later. Alcott, sir. Uh, you invited me over this afternoon? Drive on up, Ralph.
it on fire? Oh, hello. Uh, no, it's one of those hoses. Probably the radiator, too. I look like Old Faithful there for a minute. Come on. We'll take care of it later. I'd like you to meet my wife, Nora. Ralph Elka. Very pleased to meet you, Mrs. Longacre. Ralph, I've been looking forward to it. I bet you've seen all the newspapers. All about one man's courage. It'd be nice if they could make a serum out of it and give a shot to everybody in the country. <laughs> Wouldn't it, though? Well, Dad, aren't you going to tell him? Uh, uh, give me a chance. Ralph, you probably know there's been an opening for some time now for a new assistant to the chief accountant. It's yours, Ralph. Dad's promoting you for what you did. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Ah, that's, that's, that is the trouble with women. You know, they will never let you tell a punchline. There'll be a raise in it for you, too. There. At least I got that in. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure you're still being underpaid. Look, uh, I mean, I really didn't expect... A word to the wise, Ralph. Never give Martin a chance to change his mind. <laughs> They're always ganging up on me. <laughs> Chris, uh, maybe Ralph would like a drink before lunch? Oh, well, I'd better do something about my car. Oh, don't worry about it, Dad. You can have someone take care of Ralph's car, can't you? One of the hoses broke or something. Oh, no, no problem. Andy's coming over from the motor pool. He can fix yours just as well as mine. Okay. How about some tennis after lunch? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not very busy. Seems like a nice young man, doesn't he? It's funny. You know, he's worked for me for over two years. I hardly ever took notice of him before. His name is Gully, Leo Gully, out of Boston. He was released six weeks ago from a Massachusetts state penitentiary, robbery, ADW, grand theft auto. Is it a rap sheet or a portfolio? Sounds like he came west looking for greener pastures. What about the man who got away? A witness from across the street said she saw him jump into the back seat of a car and take off. Too far away to get a license number. Back seat, and it was a driver. Mm-hmm. It means there were at least four in on it. Trevor makes three. How do you figure four? You figure an inside man? Probably somebody on the security force. Now, wait a minute, John. You don't want to back yourself into that corner, do you? Joe Montgomery is my friend, too. I don't want to see him hurt, but there is no way those two could have gotten into that place without some inside help. I'm inclined to agree, but uh, I'm also remembering that a lot of other people work in that building besides Joe's security force. All right. Only the others aren't issued key cards. Okay, John. If I get into the thing, I'll give you a call. You know, for an ex-con only six weeks out of the Massachusetts Slammer, uh, this Gully character sure connected fast. And with heavyweights yet. Glad to see you've been paying attention. Well, how do you figure it? Well, since I'm not clairvoyant, I'm going to have to go to the streets for information. Well, all you have to do is point me in the right direction. Problem is, the uh, informant that I'm thinking of is hard to find. Did I ever tell you about my friend, the professor? She better stick her head out of that ivory tower of hers and see what's going on in the world. <laughs> well, you should have heard what Lois said. What? Oh, uh... Yeah, that's mine right over there. Mm. It's loaded with charm. Oh. And peeling stucco. <laughs> well, from here, all I can see is the charm. Inside, it's, uh, it's even worse. Hmm. I'd ask you in, but, uh, uh... Well, it's been a long day, Ralph. A nice day. Maybe we better say goodnight. Yeah. I guess we just did meet, didn't we? Uh-huh. Well, I have been noticing you for a long time, though. Oh. Well, where was I doing all that? Not noticing me. Calling me, uh, Robert. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, don't be. I like Robert better. OK. 
okay, Robert. Well, thanks for the lift home and, uh, and everything. Um, when you get your car fixed, you can do the same for me one day. Well, good night, Robert. Sleep well. Who is this? Roy! Who is this? Hey, I saw your picture in the paper. You look great. What do you want? Another shot at killing me? Oh, come on, pal. What happened was strictly Gully's ID. I had nothing to do with that. Yeah, sure. No, it's the truth, Ralph. Listen. Gully was afraid you'd crack up under all that questioning. He deserved what he got. And on top of that, you wind up a gold-plated hero. So maybe it's all for the best after all. Huh? Hey, look, do, do us both a favor, okay? Don't ever call me here again, okay? Oh, would you rather I call Longacre? Or the cops? And tell them how that side door got opened? What do you want? That's better. We're going in again. In? Oh, wait a minute, that's crazy. We'll talk about that tomorrow, I'll call you. Good morning, Mr. Longacre. Joe? Mr. Longacre, this is the private investigator, Barnaby Jones. Oh, yes, Mr. Jones. How do you do? I'm putting out a memo to have all of our people cooperate in every way possible. Well, thank you very much. In uh, my business, sometimes cooperation is as good as a clue. <laughs> it's terrible to think that one of my own people could have been involved in this. But if that is the case, then we've certainly got to know. For everyone's sake. If you heard a funny noise, that was my pension going down the drain. Uh, Kathy, you mind if I check your totals? I'm really very happy for you, Ralph. Hey, listen, you deserve much more credit than you've been given. Pushing that alarm button like you did. Hey, Ralph, see you a minute. Sure. Barnaby Jones, Ralph Olcott. Ralph, I thought you heard a lot about you. Barnaby's a private detective looking into the robbery. Oh, more questions. If you don't mind. I read the police report, but I always like to get some of the facts myself. Well, there's not much I can tell you about the robbery. I wasn't there. To the company's great good fortune, as it turned out. I just came out of the lunchroom, and uh, I looked, and I saw these two masked men. At the elevator, you said? Yeah. And uh, then one of them came at me. That's the part that puzzles me. Why, when they had a chance for a clean getaway, did the gully, that's the man you shot, chase you so far out of his way? Because, well, because he figured I could recognize him, I guess. Well, how could you recognize either of them if they had their masks on? Oh, sure. You're right. They had their masks off. Both of them? And you must have gotten a look at Gully's partner. You didn't tell that to the police. No, this gully had his mask off, not the other one. Well, if you've got it all sorted out, Ralph, um, are you sure? Look, Mr. Jones, I'll level with you. I've been in a, a fog ever since this thing happened. They tell me I'm a hero, but the truth is I'm not. I, I, mean, I hardly even remember uh, shooting this guy, much less uh, the details leading up to it. That's understandable, Ralph. Thank you very much.
isn't the big hero. How's it going, kid? Lousy. Ever since I let you talk me into this mess. It didn't take much talking, remember? We checked you out real good before we ever made a move on you. You said you hated the job, you wanted to shake loose, make a score. Now it's all still there. Yeah, but robbing Longacres again is dumb. Ralph, that's the beauty of it. They won't be expecting us. Us? Dully's dead. What do you mean, us? Easy. Nobody's asking me to do anything different. I already got another guy. The only thing we got to worry about is when. No, no, no. One thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to risk getting a hold of another key card. Now, that's for sure. What about hitting the loading dock? Before they put the money inside and when there are no other trucks around. For crying out loud, I don't have that kind of information. Get it. They trust you. I've been reading about your promotion. So find a way and get it. And if I don't, what are you going to do? Turn me in? Well, that works the other way around, too, you know. Except for one thing, Turkey. I got lots of friends and lots of places to hide. I can keep running forever. But how about you? You really want to give up this good life you're into now? It's nice, isn't it? All right. Look. I know, receipts from night ball games always come in late. There's one scheduled for tomorrow night. You call me when you find out the time it's due in, okay? Okay, just get away from me. Get out of here. I'll be at the Ruxton Hotel room 218, 218, waiting for your call. Go for it. Yeah, he'll go for it. What are you doing here? A girl named Kathy at the office said she saw you headed this way for lunch. And I thought that... <sighs> that guy trying to mug you or something? Uh, no, uh, he was just looking for directions. Where are you headed? Headed? I was looking for you. It's my father's birthday tomorrow. Mother and I are planning to surprise him with a dinner out. I'm sure you'll like that. And I get to bring somebody. I'm asking you. Me? Dinner? You mean tomorrow night? Well, unless, of course, you have other plans. It's, it's just family, Ralph. I'd really like you to be there with me. Tomorrow night, huh? Sure, I'd love it. Oh, terrific! <laughs> Can't do any better than that. Well, thank you, my good man. And do call again. See, Barnaby, I told you I could find the professor. Mm, Barnaby, I've been looking forward to your visit. How about five again, son? You're on. Take the pilot seat. Professor, don't you know it's against the law to gamble? But gambling holds none of the hazards of breaking the unwritten law against snitching on bad dudes like the late Mr. Gully and his friends. In some cases, snitching on bad dudes is good for the soul as well as the pocketbook. Ah. If you think throwing the point will lull me, you're mistaken. Listen, I was weaned in pool rooms. I'm not going to get hustled over one of these things. And Gully and his friends, uh, what do you got? Well, at the moment, only score. For a name and address, what would it take to overcome your understandable repugnance? Great number of toll calls, if you follow my meaning. <laughs> you know, false confidence is going to trip you up every time. If you're asking, would I pick up the phone bill? Um, how about a couple of long ones? Would that cover it? Quite nice. One now, and the rest, when the information is forthcoming. You know, I'm going to tell you a little secret, son. Half my opponents claim they were weaned in a pool run. This is the age of computers. Bye-bye. Oh, 
Well, you might as well turn around and head right back out again. That was the professor. He come up with something? Well, according to his sources, an ex-con name of Artie Moss connected with, uh, well, as he put it, a heavy dude, who sounds very much like he might be the other man in the Long Acre robbery attempt. Is there any clue to where he's staying? Only that Moss has been seen around a hotel Ruxton near Echo Park. Let's go. A driver's license, a Massachusetts prison parole card, and a few dollars is all we found on the body. Can't win them all, can you? How come you're so interested in this Artie Moss, anyway? Chip, I thought it might be a new man in that crowd that Gully ran with. Have you checked his hotel room? Moss isn't registered. Manager says he's been visiting lately with a couple in room 218, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Norton. They have anything to say? No. Seems they hightailed it out before my men got here. Think they had anything to do with the shooting? No. A witness said she saw a man she didn't recognize take off down the stairs just after it happened. John, it might not be a bad idea to get out an APB on the Nortons. It could be what's left to the gang that hit uh, Long Acre Security. I'm heady on that one. Already have. I don't know. It doesn't add up. Why would the gang have a falling out if they uh, didn't get any money to fight over? Yeah, and if you're right about this, Barnaby, it's, uh, it's also interesting that they're still around recruiting new talent. Kind of makes you wonder what their plans are. Get in here. Keys to your car. It was fixed, so I thought I'd drive it over. My God, Rob, what are you doing with the gun? Um, it's just my father's. I, uh, I just got it out of the pawn shop. I didn't even have the money till now. Uh, I thought you were a burglar. You're in some kind of trouble, aren't you? Look, things happen. Things, if you could, if you just turn back the clock, you'd never... What are you happen. talking about? Will you just tell me? Hello? You know I'm going to go to you, you slob? I'm going to make oatmeal out of your brains. I don't care what you say to me. You can't scare me anymore. Not anymore. Yeah, I know. You're a hero. So I'm going to do you a favor. You're going to stay a live hero if you tell me what time they're going to make that night money delivery. I'm warning you. Get off my back. I got a gun. You try anything, I'll use it. What are you doing? Calling my father, you need help. No! Then please just tell me. Let me help you. Just tell me what's going on. Please.
Go back home, Chris. Go on back to your nice, clean, pretty world. I like you. I like you very much. You're not going to turn me away. something to do with that robbery you stopped? It's no use. He's gonna try to kill me. Who's gonna try to kill you? That guy that... that I shot, Gully. That was his partner on the phone. He said he's gonna kill me for... for what I did. Then there's only one thing to do. Go to the police right now. Oh, what good will that do? I mean, he knows me. He knows where I live. Before the cops even find out who they're looking for, I'll be dead. Well, what about that private detective my father hired, Mr. Jones? Huh? You're gonna stay at our house tonight? I'll have Daddy call him first thing in the morning. Please. No, Mr. Jones. I just don't like the idea of going to the police for protection. I mean, how, how long can they protect me? It can't last forever. Don't worry, Ralph. You're welcome to stay here with us as long as it's necessary. Puzzling. That a thief would risk his own safety for revenge like this. Yeah, you would think he'd do himself a lot more good just by cooling it somewhere. Well, maybe this gully was his relative or something. I think that's worth looking into, don't you, Mr. Jones? Yes, there's something else I want to check out. Uh, Bill Hummel, the uh, security guard, is he on duty today? I believe so. But you've already talked to him, haven't you? I've talked to everybody, and I'm left with one fact that, uh, in addition to Ralph, uh, Hummel was the only other person who was alone at the time of the robbery. I'd like to know more about this myself. I'll go with you. Well, Ralph, uh, you'd probably be safer in a crowd. Why don't you come along? There's Ralph in the third car. But I don't see the girl. Well, Longacre's with him, too. That's perfect. You wait 10 minutes, then you make the call. Hello? The Longacre residence? Yes. This is the police dispatcher, Dwyer Division. Our unit has just radioed a 640 traffic accident at Sunset Willoughby. Oh, no, an accident? One of the victims, uh, uh, Martin Longacre, has been injured and uh, is being rushed to Central Receiving Hospital. Uh, he's asking for Chris. Okay, I'll be right there. your idea to hire the private detective and let him do his job. Sure, Mr. Jones, I, I was alone. Well, he's got a right to ask. All right. You figure that all this is tied in with Bill's key card? It's the only card that hasn't been accounted for at the time of the robbery. Excuse me, Mr. Longacre, your secretary's holding a call for you. Well, tell her to take a number. It's some man calling about Chris. Says it's urgent. I'll be right back. Excuse me. Mr. Hummel, you said that you Keep your card and your jacket at all time. Yes, sir. Right here. It's always with me. When you're uh, 
Using the washroom to clean up, you'll probably take it off then. Well, no, I, uh, I usually push back my sleeves. I never take it off except... Except when? E except when I'm eating. You weren't wearing it when you're having lunch? No, I never do. I don't want to get any stains on it, you know? Well, where do you usually keep it at that time? Uh, right there on the hanger. With your back to it? It's the ball game. Well, anybody could have lifted it. Well, not just anybody. It would have to be a, a certain anybody who made two trips. That's right. Second time to return the card. Well, uh, let me see. Uh, Joe, you were in and out a couple of times. And uh, one of the girls, uh, I can't remember which one. And Ralph, you came back to get Kathy a cup of coffee. Coffee for me? Sure. Right about at the time those guys hit the place. Ah, Ralph? Sure. But don't you remember? No, not really. But if you say so. Hello. Dad. Chris, you sound funny. Is something wrong? Dad, do what the man says or he's going to hurt me. Chris. Chris. Paul Hager, you have any doubt that was your daughter? Who is this? What have you done to Chris? Shut up and listen. Go to your vault and put $250,000 in a bag. You've got a half an hour, so that won't give you time to mark the bills. In a single car with the money, go north from the freeway along the Arroyo Canyon Road until the car is stopped. You got that? I can't possibly get the money all together and drive there in half an hour. I'm allowing you an extra 20 minutes for the trip, and you're not driving. I want somebody I can recognize. And who? That kid whose picture's been in all the papers, Ralph Olcott. Him I'd recognize. OK? Hey, Andy, listen, make sure that thing doesn't lock on me, eh? That's okay. You sure you're going to fit in that trunk? Well, that shouldn't be any problem. You think Ralph Falk got the inside man, eh? Sure begin to look that way, but we got no definite proof to go, and that's the reason he's not going to know you're in the back. Pardon me. How many speed loads did you break getting here? Well, I stopped counting halfway here. Here are your walkie-talkies. New batteries at all. Uh, Jedediah, ground rules. No heroics. Just keep sending locations. That's all. You understand? You're the boss. Just remember that these things don't carry very far. I'll be within your range. Well, Barnaby, I also have a message for you from Lieutenant Biddle. They found latent prints at that hotel belonging to a Roy Swain, an ex-con and parole violator. What did this Swain serve time for? Armed robbery. Before that, extortion and attempted murder. It's all here. Now, Mr. Longacre, before we start, I want to advise you once again. No. No police. Now, the company has my personal check for the money. It's nobody's business but mine, and until I get Chris back safely, the police stay out. Your daughter comes first, that's for sure. But the man who did the kidnapping and the one who is threatening you, Ralph, I believe is one and the same. Yes, I know. But I want to go anyway. Well, we'll try to see that nothing goes wrong. But I'll need about three or four minutes after you make contact. See if you can find a way to stall him for that long. OK. Jones, Mr. Longacre, we will do whatever is necessary. I can't see much, though. Barnaby, there's a sawhorse blocking the road where we turned off to the right. That sounds like the quarry. If so, it's a dead end.
The road's bottomed out. I get the feeling we're gonna stop. I'm moving in, JR. Find a phone, call Lieutenant Biddle. something for that jerk to commit suicide over. Well, then I'll see how much your daddy loves you. Okay, open the doors. And I don't want to see anything in there except a bag of money. Chris, are you okay? Yes. All right, bring it over. I want to talk first. About what? You know, this is chicken feed compared to what's still in Long Acres Vault. There's five or six million. We could still pull it off. How about it? Ralph, what are you talking about? Uh-uh. What's in the bag will do me fine. Just put it up there. OK, let her go. I want to see it first. It's all there. Chris, go to the car. You gotta be dreaming. Now, you made a deal. Let her go. The only trouble is she can identify us. Oh, you walk right into this. Chris, run! Run! Where's that ambulance, anyway? It'll be here in a minute. But from the looks of him, I don't think he'll even make it to the hospital. Did you tell Chris that I was just stalling for time, like he said? Yes, Ralph, I told her. Ralph? You all right, Chris? Thanks to you? I don't know what they told you, but I just wanted to know. Don't try and talk now. I won't have another chance. Sure you will. You'll be out of the hospital in no time. I just wish we could have met before all this. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> 